Even if you're drinking coffee now in front of your Mac, you love penguins or antelopes, it doesn't matter. All of you have used Windows at least once. But this prevalence of Windows comes at a cost. Correct. A ton of unreliable software, misconceptions, system cleaners, and even fetishes. Today we'll talk about all of this, how it came to be, and what is worth and not worth doing with your Windows. This is MK here. Let's dive into Windows. Myth number one. Windows needs to be reinstalled from time to time. There's plenty of people out there who prefer some preventive treatment, suggesting cleaning the computer every six months, changing thermal paste and reinstalling Windows every couple of years. In fact, keeping your PC clean is not a bad idea at all. If you know what you're doing, you can be through with it in just a couple of hours. The point here is that such preventive measures are often simply an overkill. If you open your PC case and see that the components inside are clean enough, there is no point in disassembling everything and cleaning it till it shines. If there are no problems with overheating, do not replace the thermal paste. If Windows works stably and without glitches, do not reinstall it. Moreover, even if the system is unstable, this is not a reason to demolish the OS entirely and set everything up from scratch. The days of Windows 95 are long gone. Back in the days, it was easier to reinstall the system than fix the errors. Now we have various error logs and you can find enough solutions on the internet for most of the problems that may arise with your system. So reinstalling Windows is an extreme solution applicable only when it's so bad that it's easier to shoot it dead than try to fix it. Reinstalling Windows preventively every couple of years is only worth it if you have nothing better to do. The second myth. The storage drive must be divided into two partitions. An interesting misconception that has its roots in the 90s. On the one hand, when the system is installed in one partition and your data is stored in another, you can quickly erase only the system partition when reinstalling Windows and not lose your files. And this is what made such partitioning popular in the 90s, when due to frequent reinstalling of Windows, people remembered license keys for it by heart. On the other hand, there are still enough users who do not see the difference between different partitions and separate physical drives, so there is an opinion that if something happens to disk C, the data on D will be okay. This does make sense, but only if you have two different physical drives. But if you have two partitions on the same drive, there's a high chance of data loss in both partitions on it. These days, we do not tend to reinstall Windows ever so often, so it only makes sense to partition your drive like that if it's simply more convenient for you that way. Nonetheless, some companies such as Huawei continue splitting SSDs in their laptops into two partitions. Such partitioning will cost you up to several gigabytes of free space due to the system reserving some space for itself. So it makes sense to merge such logical volumes into one when you get a new PC like that. The third myth. The system must be cleaned by third-party tools. Perhaps this is one of the most harmful myths that can cause problems with your PC. Very often, on various forums and websites, you can find some advice to use CCleaner and other similar tools to clean the garbage that your system generates. Sometimes it does help, but more often than not, it just pretends to work. On top of that, such cleaning may even cause problems with your windows. Yes, for the most part, such cleaning software works according to the most precise algorithms, which on most PCs will really clean the garbage generated by programs and various system caches, but at times, Usually, after major Windows updates, such software can start to fail and erase data important to the system. You probably won't be able to kill the system completely, however, it's quite possible to get a non-working start menu or a malfunctioning file explorer. But then, how are we supposed to clean the system? To do this, Windows has a built-in tool that is developed by Microsoft and is safe for the system. It is easy to find, just right-click on Disk C and select the Disk Cleanup option in the Properties. Yes, such a built-in function will usually remove less data than, say, CCleaner, but this is a price you pay for security. The only thing worth using third-party software for is to remove the leftovers from various programs. In this case, the risk to the system is minimal. However, the freed space will hardly exceed several megabytes, which makes such a process simply meaningless in modern realities. Myth number four. You need to constantly update drivers. Another curious fetish is constantly driver updating. A bug fix comes out, install it. Realtek released a new sound driver for the second time in a month, install it immediately. On the one hand, there is nothing wrong here. New drivers are not released for no reason. They usually at least have a bug fix, and sometimes even add new functions. 
On the other hand, there is an important principle that says, if it works, leave it be. Probably many of you have noticed that Windows 10 and 11 automatically installs drivers for most of your components and that these drivers are often two or three years old. The thing here is that Microsoft has developed its own driver testing system called WHQL. This abbreviation in the name of the driver means that it has passed all the necessary tests. It is stable enough and safe enough for general deployment. Windows installs on its own only such drivers. And even if they were released a couple of years ago but the system is stable, there is no point in updating them for no reason. Of course, except for drivers for those devices where new features are constantly being added, for example for graphics cards, where almost every new driver has optimizations for freshly released games. And most importantly, forget about driver packages. They seem to be a convenient way to quickly get the latest drivers, but their massive problem is that they often offer drivers not for your specific hardware, but for the most common hardware, for the target family of devices, so to say. Such drivers are theoretically compatible, but in practice, they can render the keyboard of your Xiaomi laptop inoperable, or cause it to malfunction. Therefore, once again, I repeat, if it works, leave it be. If it doesn't, update the drivers by hand from official or verified websites. Myth number five. After installing Windows, you must install a third-party antivirus. Well, in the days of Windows XP and even Windows 7, it actually used to make sense. The anti-malware tools built into the system provided only minimal protection. So, installing third-party solutions was a necessity for safe operation, especially considering that piracy was thriving back in the days. However, this has not been the case for a long time now. Windows 10 and 11 have an excellent built-in antivirus that provides protection, at least at the level of Kaspersky and Norton, thanks to the fact that it is integrated into the system and can provide, for example, core isolation. Its reliability is confirmed by many independent tests, so it no longer makes sense to install third-party solutions. Microsoft's own antivirus is more than enough. Myth number six. The registry needs to be cleaned and optimized. Oh, this poor registry. It appeared back in the 90s as a way to store program configuration files, and now butterfingered optimizers and modders are tampering with it. It is very important to understand the fact that the registry is extremely deeply integrated into Windows, so any clumsy movement in it can render your system entirely inoperable. That is why you should not touch it unless absolutely necessary and even more so let various optimizations and cleaning software dig into it. Cleaning the registry will not speed up the system. Deleting even a few hundred keys in it will not affect the performance of your PC in any way. That is because of the tree-like structure of the registry. If a registry key is not used, the system simply will not read it. Therefore, deleting it will save you a few hundred bytes at most. So once again, leave the registry alone, even if you really want to play with it. Perhaps the only reason why you should go there is to remove some malware, which for example replaces the browser's starting page. There are no other mass reasons to touch this sanctuary of your system. Moving on, myth number seven. Updating the system is an evil that needs to be disabled by all means. This is a fairly modern trend, which actually has some grounds. Windows 10 updates rarely come out stable. Microsoft sometimes recalls them and reissues them in order to fix the problems they cause, and at the same time, new errors often appear too. Therefore, the desire to disable updates once and for all in a system that is currently running smoothly seems to make a lot of sense. However, using third-party tools for this, which literally break Windows, destroying the update mechanisms in it is an obvious overkill. The fact is that Microsoft quite officially allows you to postpone the update in the case of the Pro version for as much as a year and in the case of the Home version for a month. On top of that, the postpone updates for a week button is literally on the main page of the update center. Therefore, there is no point in forcibly turning off updates by third-party tools. The built-in ones are quite enough. Usually, if an update causes problems, it becomes known in a day or two after the release and the chance that they will fix it in a month is close to 100%. The best solution in this case is not to completely disable the update center, but simply to postpone the updates for later. In this case, the chance of getting problems caused by updates is minimal and you're not changing anything under the hood. Myth number eight. The page file is also an evil that needs to be disabled. 
Just like the registry, the page file also often falls victim to those trying to optimize everything. Initially, it was created by Microsoft to help those who could not afford to buy a 32GB DDR5 kit for a thousand euros. But in all seriousness, this is a file on your drive that performs the function of RAM, and the system dynamically sends data that is not currently being used into that file freeing up the precious RAM space for priority tasks. Obviously, even the fastest SSD will be slower than a simple DDR3 RAM, not to mention DDR4 or 5. Therefore, the advice to disable the page file when you got a lot of RAM seems to make sense, as well as the excuse that this will prolong the life of your drive and speed up the system. However, in fact, not everything is so rosy. Firstly, the resource of even inexpensive modern SSDs is such that with normal use, you will have enough time to upgrade your PC a couple of times and your good old solid-state drive will still be there to store your stuff reliably. So there's no point in worrying about its longevity. Secondly, modern software is demanding enough to go beyond 16 and even 32 gigs at peak. So the page file is a kind of insurance. I'd rather my program start freezing but keep working than crash altogether due to data loss. Therefore, I wouldn't advise you to disable the page file under the modern Windows. It is smart enough to bite off only the necessary space from the drive, which seldom exceeds several gigabytes. This can hardly be called a critical price for stability, right? Myth number 9. Pure Windows sucks. Side builds are much better. Actually, this point is quite interesting for me as a Russian. As you may have noticed, we're making our videos in Russian as the original language and then translate and dub them to the best of our abilities. You see, in this case, we'll have to diverge a bit from the original narrative. The thing is, this whole point is about the Windows builds that are made by some developers who have nothing to do with Microsoft and release their own versions of Windows that you can download on Torrent. I'm not sure if this is a thing where you're from, at least I couldn't find anything like it in the English-speaking section of the internet, but here is what it's all about. If you go to any major Russian-speaking torrent tracker, you will be surprised that you can find even Windows 11 builds. And this is quite strange, actually. I get it that back in the days of Windows XP, the internet was very slow. And it was really convenient to get the most updated version of Windows on a DVD disk right away, and with some useful software that comes with it. But why would we need it now? This is something I can't quite wrap my head around. In such builds, they integrate all the latest updates, some additional software, and also cut out some of the unnecessary functions. For example, user tracking and telemetry. And judging by the reviews on these torrent trackers, the users are mostly satisfied with such builds. However, as I have already said, there's little sense in such builds in the modern world. Microsoft does not forbid downloading official images of Windows 10 and 11 from their own website, even in Russia, and they will even help you create a boot drive. Downloading any software you might need from the internet is also not a problem now. But disabling various system processes does not look safe at all. Firstly, most of the user tracking can be disabled quite officially, and besides, it's time to get used to the fact that everyone is collecting big data these days. Secondly, disabling UAC, which is the pop-up window that requests administration rights, can lead to the system becoming simply defenseless against malware. And thirdly, deep digging into the system can result in stability issues, so the best option is to forget about these side builds and install only pure windows from the Microsoft website. Not sure if this information is of any use to you guys, but maybe some of you will tell us in the comments if this is a thing in the place where you're from and what this is actually for. To conclude, I believe you guys have received the main message. Leave the system alone and it will reward you with a long, stable work. For Microsoft employees, certainly understand their own code much better than the authors of those tweaks, optimizers, and other driver packages. Given the fact that Windows 10 has been almost completely fixed over the last five years of updates, it's better not to try and improve what's already good enough. The latest and greatest Windows 11 cannot boast of such stability yet, but in addition to the visuals, it also has many new functions. I hope you all knew that. Most likely, some of you would disagree on some points, or maybe you have your own points to add. All of that you can do in the comment section down below. This was MK. My name is Mikhail Kroshin. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you soon.